Since 2005, particularly when the project started kicking in, 2007 borrowing for Vika Roads and the others started off, we have kept up. What we have seen is as we uh, invested in the projects, we borrowed and invested in the project. The savings on Kenyans have grown significantly. The tax collection have moved from 200 billion uh, to about 1.7 trillion. Uh, you can call it uh, six, uh, seven times, eight times. So it's matching up. If it has grown even faster than the debt has, has grown. So essentially it was purely a metric. Am I concerned out about uh, the debt? Not really. Because if you look at the, how much this project has stimulated the economy, uh, particularly um, uh, to date, uh, the economy will not uh, lead a struggle. If we, for instance, are able to capture the GDP of the informal sector, which again, it will force us to recalibrate the economy, we will see the current ratio that we are talking of, of 58%, most likely will fall back to 40%. As the projects roll on, some of the things that we started to see, and probably we started to see them when the bigger ones, uh, you know, got underway, the standard gauge rail, um, and people are getting moved, and then we start to feel the impact of how it is impacting the daily lives of people. Yes, we are trying to move populations from one place to another, move goods from one place to another in a more efficient way. But what does that do to I actually have two uncles who got moved? Not in a bad way, but they needed to make way for this project. But they were completely clueless about the Vision 2030. So there's still something there that needs to happen. Because when we now, as the media, document the impact of the rollout of the projects on the citizens, we are perceived in a negative way as being opposed to the projects. Chairman, I want to tell you, we are not. We are just showing you what is happening on the ground as the projects take, uh, take, take effect, as the projects get rolled out. If you look at the budget policy statement that uh, we issued in 20, for 2018, we are looking at something which is called physical consolidation. So going forward, we want to progressively reduce the quantity and the ratio of the public debt that we have. And that is in line with our management of the economy, just to make sure that we don't crowd out the private sector. But, but one very important aspect is that when Vision 2030 was launched in 2008, it was very clear and it was pronounced by the then Minister for National Development, Planning and Vision 2030, uh, Honorable Wycliffe of Paranya, that 70% of the funding of Vision 2030 will come from outside government. However, in the initial period of now implementing the Vision 2030 flagship project, we were not able to get enough private sector money to come in because there were risks that private sector was seeing. And so government has to come in to de-risk the projects that were there. And some of that de-risking is the infrastructure that we are talking about. Talk about the Lamu uh, area where we have got the beginning of the Lapset Corridor. Because the government went there with public debt, we now have a situation where in Lamu we are get, getting seven flights per day going and into and out of Lamu now. Previously, before we started Vision 2030, the flights to Lamu were three in a week. So from three flights in a week to seven flights per day, that is what that debt has done. When, for example, we have uh, the GDP numbers which are released uh, every year in May, uh, how that therefore translates, uh, for example, in a community radio uh, in Meru. Uh, what kind of conversations would they have? Would they translate those numbers, break them down into a form uh, uh, that the local community can engage with and understand? And that, uh, in my view, uh, partly is the obligation of uh, uh, the, the people generating the information, packaging it, and, they have, and delivering it to us who are in the media uh, to transmit to the public. At that level, uh, there needs to be a deliberate effort 
uh, to make sure that uh, apart from speaking the language of those who would read uh, the Daily Nation or the Standard, uh, could we break this information into a form that Wanjiku can understand?